Hello everyone, welcome to my Psychotic Break version 2 overview video. As you can see, a lot has changed from version 1 to the brand new version 2. So let's take a closer look and see what's changed with Psychotic Break. I've been working for the past few months making changes to the original version 1 design to come up with this version 2. And if you remember the video that I came out with a couple months ago talking about the planning, um, you can definitely see the geometry difference between the two. They have the same basic construction style where they have an outer frame that sits on the outside, which I kind of call the exoskeleton. This one's carbon fiber, this one's aluminum. And then they have the body that kind of sits in the middle and then the weapon out at the end. So the general construction is about the same. It's just there's some material difference and some geometry distance. The biggest difference between these two is for version 2, it has been shrunk down and made a lot more compact because version 1 had a real issue with driving because it was just so long. The um, weapon blade is just so far out there. I mean, this thing is like, I think, 18 inches tall or something like that. So the length of this made it very difficult to drive and maneuver. So this one just kind of got a lot more stout. The interesting thing about version 2 is that the wheelbase is actually identical to what it was on version 1. The wheels sit the exact same distance out. I basically just cut six, six and a half inches off of this and added the wheel guard on the side. So um, let me get a better close-up shot of this and I'll show you some of the new visual elements of version 2. So here's a little bit better up close look at Psychotic Break version 2. As you can see it is very very chunky. The top and bottom frames are both six millimeter thick carbon fiber so you know right around a quarter inch which is very, very thick carbon fiber. The weapon up here has gone from a 3 16 inch AR-400 up to a quarter inch S7. And this is a much beefier blade. Fun fact, this was supposed to have a disc as well, but the disc ended up being unbalanced and I just kind of ran out of time. So I'm just running with this um, blade right here. Uh, but this is about 400 grams on the blade. So it's um, significantly heavier than the previous weapon. The previous weapon was about 300. So this is about 30% heavier than the previous blade and significantly smaller. The other blade was, um, I think, 12 and a half. This is, I think, eight inches. So it's a lot smaller, thicker, and denser. So this should be interesting. Um, if we look over here at the sides, uh, you can see that we have these wheel guards, which are completely removable. There's a screw on top and bottom, and top and bottom, and these completely removed. So these are mostly sacrificial. And the body, comes down below the frame here, but the wheel guards actually extend up over to protect this whole side of the bot. And you can kind of get a better look at them like that. So these whole things just come off. There is also a dead shaft inside that helps stabilize the wheel. Now in terms of materials, six millimeter carbon fiber on top, hardened S7 up here, the wheel guards on the end, this is nylon, X, so glass reinforced, um, I'm sorry, carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And then the gray body here is nylon G, which is glass fiber reinforced carbon fiber. And then the hub motor up front here is machined 6061 aluminum. So yeah, it kind of gives you an idea of some of the materials here. So here is a better look at the back. I'm doing kind of the same thing that I did on version one with the switches. So I've got an LED and then the power switch over here just kind of integrated into the shell. The shell is once again two pieces and there is a seam down the middle here and there's just kind of an indicating locating pin here and then you know in other places I'll show you that when we take it apart but you basically just got the power switch and the LED integrated into the back with kind of all these facets and stuff. Now if we flip this over and look at the upside down or the bottom side you can see that there are magnets on the bottom. This is to help improve traction. Um, I have the ability of doing just two 
uh, two in back, two up front, or I can do all four. And if weight allows for it, there are even provisions for some up top, and I have the same cutouts on top. Now the magnets do not attach to the frame, they actually attach to the body. There are brass inserts on the inside of the body, and it screws through the frame and into the brass inserts in the body. So that's kind of interesting. The frame actually doesn't house the magnets themselves. So yeah, that is what the underside and the back looks like. So let's start taking this apart. This is probably a good time to point out that even though this is pretty much complete, it is not the final, final robot that will show up at Steamfest. Um, I typically film these videos near the end of the build cycle because I have to kind of disassemble it and do little things in the video. I tend to film it and then a few days later, then I'll do a final assembly and go through and zip tie everything and lock tight everything. So what you're seeing is just kind of it put together just for the video. So some little things might be missing here or there. So this is what it looks like when the top frame is removed. Um, up front we have the hub motor. You can see that there's no belts. Uh, the motor is not in here. This itself is the motor. And then you can see the separate connections for the wheel guards and then the body and then the standoffs that go through the frame because this whole thing just kind of uh, floats inside and I'll take that off later. Um, you do see some things missing. I don't have the brass inserts in here yet and I don't have um, you know the tape and the zip tie on this to hold the wire in place. But you can see the wires that go back into the main body. So let's um, first take a look at the hub motor. Uh, missing the four screws up front here, that's just for the video. So we have a spacer that spaces the shaft off of the body. This is a 10 millimeter diameter St uh, hardened steel shaft, I forgot exactly, just a high carbon steel. I think it's like 54 Rockwell. So this is a very hard shaft. Um, and I drilled and thread milled this to accept um, the quarter 20 screw that is um, going to stabilize this whole thing. Now I do have a different um, screw coming in that has a much wider flanged base to it. So that will help. And then if we take off this little protective cover here, this is just 3D printed um, nylon X we can see the actual hub motor inside. We have a bearing on the top and then there's another bearing underneath. And I should be able to just pull this out. It's a little tight. There we go. So that comes off with a little bit of force. And um, so yeah, we have the one bearing on the bottom, the other bearing on top. If you wanna learn more about this, you can check out my video on hub motors, but this is the hub motor that was featured inside that video. And then the four screws holds it onto the flanged base at the bottom, and then the magnet ring is pressed inside there. And then the only reason I did the bowel hardening on the top of this motor is because these screws that go through this little protective cap right there can kind of get down in there a little bit and I just want to make sure that it doesn't scratch too badly against the surface. So it's just a little bit of epoxy right there on the top. We have another spacer here on top of the motor just to space this off of it. And that's pretty much all there is to the hub motor. On the bottom side, it is just into the frame like that, and then the other screw, and this one will get um, bigger with a bigger flange on it for the final version. So let's flip this over and take off the wheel guard so I can give you an idea what they look like. And so they just kind of pull out the side and the wheels aren't attached on that, but you can see that it has the dead shaft on it. Okay, that's a little odd. So there we go. Here is what one of the wheel guards looks like. So it has, um, the brass bushing was originally meant for the shaft here to actually spin, but it doesn't really spin. So it's mostly there just for good looking. Um, but yeah, that is what the wheel guard looks like. And these just kind of bolt on and off, and they fit into the little, um, I guess, V pattern into the side of the frame. So yeah, it just kind of locks in place just like that. Then the other side, and then the wheels come off, 
and that is what the body looks like without them in place. And you can see that the frame actually extends past, so part of the reason for the indent on the top and bottom that mates up is so they can actually protect the frame, because if you had an undercutter, it could cut like that and then start delaminating the frame, so it extends past that just to cover the carbon fiber from being hit. So now with the wheel guards gone, we can just kind of pry up uh, this frame a little bit. There's a couple locating pins that hook them together. And there you go. So there is the top piece. Um, everything in here is symmetrical. So the wheel guards are symmetrical left and right. So the same piece can be used for either side. They just kind of have to be flipped for either side. The top and bottom are identical. That's why the LED and the switch are equidistant away and they have the same mounting so that you can flip them. It doesn't really matter. And then the top and bottom are the exact same as well. So everything is nice and symmetrical, which makes it a lot easier. So this is the inside. There's a little bit of final wiring cleanup that needs to happen. Like I don't have the um, actual motor attached yet because everything's hardwired in here. So I have to solder and desolder it when I assemble and desem de disassemble. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what it looks like inside. Um, we have the frame just kind of floats like I can just kind of lift it straight up um, over top of this. We have the same gear motors that I had previously. They've been squared off so that they fit in these little channels. So now they don't really spin or rotate. And yeah, that's about all there is to it. I'm still using the same electronics as previous. I've got the um, 51A BL Heli 32 speed controller for the weapon. The 21As, I believe, for the drive. Same brushless drive I've always been using. Um, same battery and for the busing of all the power. I can kind of remove this. Um, you see that I'm using these um, Wego lever locks in here. They're actually glued down into the frame here and everything just kind of busses directly into it. And here's just a much closer view because people like looking at this stuff for wire routing and everything. Um, the power switch just sits on posts like that. So everything, there's no fasteners anywhere in here. Everything just pops right out um, and everything is just kind of floating in place. So servicing this is nice because you can literally just flip it upside down, dump everything out, do all your fixing, and then just put it all back in, which is kind of cool. Um, power switch in there. Battery takes up the vast majority of the back. Um, you can see there's a little locating pin back here that helps the top and bottom align and also makes it that if you get hit right here, the blow is absorbed by both the top and bottom. We have the radio over here. I've got a little um, BEC or battery luminaire circuit um, right there. That has always been pretty helpful. And yeah, that's about all there is to it. Just kind of move some of this stuff out of the way so you can kind of see what's going on. And yeah, both the top and bottom have this little kind of cutout here in the bottom so that the wires can fish through for the motor. Um, but yeah, that's about all there is to it on the inside. The motors here themselves are fully protected by these little walls. So when the top and the bottom are on there, I don't really have to worry about anything interfering with the um, outrunners here. They'll just kind of be in their nice little cocoons and then the ESCs are over here. So really nothing can um, mess with them, which is kind of nice. They're just fully encapsulated. So I wanted to share one last little modification that I made kind of last minute. This was, you know, one night I had this idea. I didn't really feel totally comfortable just taping and zip tying the wire here. So I 3D printed this little cover out of nylon G and you can see it has kind of a channel down the middle for the wires and it has a bit of a radius to the top and then it has little clips that just kind of clips into the channels here and effectively covers the majority of the wire going down this little channel. And if we flip it around, um, you can see that just kind of clips into the back here and it is really, really on there. It takes quite a bit of force to get this thing off. And then yeah, that's what it looks like. And I actually printed this vertically. So I printed it like this up. And so the layer lines are going like this in the print. So I shouldn't have to worry about it snapping um, as it bends, you know, like that. Um, so yeah, just a nice little um, cable clamp to keep these wires from getting nicked or hit.
So that is what Psychotic Break version 2 looks like. By the time you watch this video, I will probably already be at Steamfest competing, so the next video you see will be the event recap. So that should be interesting. Hopefully I do a little bit better this time. The first version of Psychotic Break got fourth place and fourth place, so I'm hoping for a first, second, or third place with this one. Um, so cross your fingers, we will see. I still have a few little finishing touches, um, some screws and some wiring on the inside and stuff like that, but we'll see where that goes. Um, in terms of the wheels themselves, I am using the Fingertech foam wheels again. We're gonna give that one last shot and see how that works. I will be coating them in a liquid latex to hopefully get a little bit more traction. Hopefully between that, the different weight distribution and the magnets on the bottom, I get a little bit better drive with this. So that was much needed for the last one. But overall, I'm pretty darn happy with how this turned out visually. I think this is probably one of the prettier robots I've ever made. It is um, one of the cleanest looking, I think, other than Lolo Man, which will also be attending Steam Fest. So yeah, pretty happy with how it came out. I've spent a lot of time in this and I'm just ready to be done with it. So I'm gonna put the finishing touches on this and then next weekend, this weekend when you watch it, I will be competing at Steam Fest. So yeah, as always, check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.